Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. the ocean. That's because you're in the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, on the other hand, have a real sixth sense. You know, I can really sense things around me. I mean, it's uncanny. Check this out. Oh, yep. I can sense that today it's going to be sunny with a slight breeze. Oh, wow. Your sense is a spot on. All right, I can sense there is a crab coming over that rock now. It's coming. It's obviously got caught up doing something more important. Oh, I can tell you that tonight, it's going to be a full moon. Sorry, that's next week. Wow. So I guess I don't need to tell you there's a shark behind you. What? <laughs> it's not a real shark. I, I guess we've just proved there that uh, between us, we don't have the greatest senses. But when it comes to these guys on the reef, They've got senses we haven't even heard of. They're sensational. <laughs> you see what I did there? Sensational. I smell a little fishy. I'm scared. Now this is one big nostril and one amazing sense of smell. Meet the cunning cone shell. He pretends to be an innocent shell. but is constantly on the smell for dinner. As water passes through this tubey nostril of his, the cone shell is able to smell the aroma of nearby snoozing fish, who suspect nothing until it's too late. Wow! Ah, I get it. The cone shell looks sweet and innocent, so who would suspect him of being a predator? The fish is at a bit of a disadvantage. The cone shell with his extra long nostril can smell him, but he can't smell the cone shell. Whoa, he's a fast worker. This is a multi-purpose siphon. Hidden underneath is his tongue. On the end, there's a tooth, but not any ordinary tooth. A barbed tooth that stabs its prey, like a poison dart. The speed of attack together with his deadly venom mean that despite looking all sweet and innocent... Can I help in any way? He's actually a deadly poisonous predator. Aha, a deadly shell with super smell. Who smells so well, but you just can't tell. OK, enough of this bad poetry. Let's see our next sense ability. <laughs> testing, testing. Crayfish to mantis shrimp. Do you read me? Over and out. What? Those must be the biggest antennae in the world. Well, in the sea world, definitely. Relatively speaking, they do have antennae as long as their bodies. Whoa! But that's not their only weird thing about their bodies. Listen to this for a strange set of parts. They have a body armour, eyes on stalk, six small feet round the mouth, five pairs of legs and a fan on the bottom. Uh, what? Body armour, eyes on stalks, six small feet round the mouth, five pairs of legs and a fan on the bum. Hello? That's amazing! That is one freaky body. Imagine if you had to walk around looking like that. And yet they kind of look OK, unlike me. Well, they have many talents. They use their antennae as legs, mostly to smell. When it comes to smelling, they really are quite smell sensational. Give me a break. No one asked you. Ah, uh, you were saying? I think it's science time. OK, here's the science bit. Listen and learn. About 40% of a crayfish's brain is devoted to smell, compared to approximately 1% of a human's. Oh, thanks, Dr B. They sense chemicals in the water using these little leggy bits here. They're called antennals. Ah, oh, like Diddy antennae. Yeah, kind of. They use their sensational smell mainly to find food, but it also comes in handy for smelling the wee of other crayfish. <laughs> 
pardon? Yeah, when, when crayfish fight, they wee into the water. What? That's so cool! Rather unusual weaponry, I have to say. The smell of the wee tells the crayfish how strong his opponent is. It may even help him decide whether to carry on fighting or back down. Crayfish are a feast of senses. They also hear through their legs. Their little hairy legs are able to sense water movements too. Oh, I can hear you. Oh, stop weeing. So, we've had one megatube nostril and legs that can smell. They're pretty extreme, these ocean sniffer animals. Yep, just like our sniffing cone shell, our crafty crayfish has its very own strange way of smelling. Not to mention strange things in smelling. But it's about to get even weirder. <laughs> Mine's better. I've got balloons. Oh, hey! Oh, I give up, Sid. Where are you hiding? My mum got me a pink one. <laughs> now, show me someone who doesn't love a clownfish. Ah, oh, look at them clowning around. Hey, Jem, what did the shark say to his mate after eating a clownfish? <laughs> did that taste funny to you? <laughs> huh? They're so cute, though. Hey, you think that's cute? Wait until you see this. <laughs> It's a baby clownfish. Cool. Look at it, a titchy fish the size of a bean, but with a supersonic smell. Really? Oh, yeah. And boy, do they need it. The mummy clownfish lays her eggs in the anemone, ow, 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 ow. the home of the clownfish. Ow, 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 ow. But once they are born, they drift away from their home into the ocean. Ah, hang on. This isn't going to be a sad story, is it? <laughs> <laughs> they may look cute, but they're pretty tough. And they're now on their own in the ocean and have to find another anemone to set up their own home. OK, so they're in the ocean, which is a pretty big place. Uh, how do they find an anemone? Don't they get lost? Well, that's where their best mate, the anemone, comes to the rescue. I'm over here, clowny. He releases a scent into the water, which the clownfish can sense from miles away. Ah, oh, that's a bit strange. That would be like me smelling Mum's cooking from the other end of town. Yummy! It's believed that the clownfish know which smell to follow because they are covered in the mucus of the anemone they were born in. So they wait until they get a whiff of something that smells like home. Yay! And then they follow their nose right across the ocean to find their pal, the anemone, and nuzzle into its tentacles for a fresh coat of mucus. Ah, oh, home sweet home. We love you! Amazingly sensitive smelling skills, I agree. But what does the anemone get out of it? Well, this is a classic reef symbiotic friendship. It's an I'll scratch your back <laughs> and you scratch mine type of friendship. The anemone needs the bouncy clownfish help to scare away other fish like the butterfly fish. Boo, go away. See, you never knew smell could be so handy, did you? So, like our crazy crayfish who sniffs his opponent's wee in the water, the super-sniffing clownfish and his anemone buddy use scent in the ocean to communicate with each other. How sensational! <laughs> um, shouldn't someone tell that fish that eating sand uphill is probably not a good idea? <laughs> it's OK. This is a goat fish. <laughs> They're not eating sand, but using their goatee whiskers to sift through the sand for bits of food. Goatfish. <laughs> You're kidding, right? <laughs> kidding, because baby goats is called kids, and that's where it's funny. Na, 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 na. Oh, that's a beauty. As I was saying, they're called goatfish because of these whiskery barbells under their chin, just like a goat's beard. They're cool. It's like having your own mouth rake. But surely finding food in the sand is like looking for a needle in a haystack, or in this case, a shrimp in a seabed. Ah, they're not just ordinary whiskers. They can actually taste like whiskery tongues, so it may look like they're just rustling up a sandstorm, but they're actually noshing at the same time. He's constantly on the go looking for food, <laughs> which might also explain why he has lots of fishy friends following him around. Hi, goatee. What's up? Hey, follow that goat fish. Got any spare grab today, goatee? It might also explain why he sometimes just needs to be alone. Do you mind? I'm chilling. Go away. So, what's the connection between the bearded goatfish and the clownfish then, Barney? Well, they can both use taste and smell more than sight. The clownfish smell the anemone from way out at sea, and the goatfish can taste food hidden deep in the sand. Next up, sheepfish. 
<laughs> no, I'm only kidding. No such thing as sheepfish. But this guy's just as cheerful, you know. And he's got a very strange shaped body. Yes, meet the rather bizarre boxfish. Not difficult to see why. His body is squared at the corners, so he looks like a box. Uh, excuse me. He's not a very fast mover. I mean, his fins look a bit useless, if you ask me. Well, he doesn't need bigger fins. Boxy here has got toxic skin and tastes disgusting. <laughs> so he gets left in peace to mosey around the reef at his own pace. But he looks too pretty to be toxic. That's another clue to his predators to leave him be. His bright outfit is his way of saying, I might look tasty, but eat me and weep. So he's a mini link to our goatfish with his tasty whiskers. One has an amazing sense of taste and one tastes amazingly bad. Does memory count as a sense? Because I think I'm losing mine. You're going to have to help remind me. OK, it's reef cap time. Well, the cunning cone shell was our first super sense. His extendable smelling tongue and innocent appearance means he can sneak up unseen on his unsuspecting dinner. As for the crayfish, I won't be paddling in crayfish waters anytime soon. When they're fighting each other, they speak through their wee. Ew. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Your sense of humour needs some work. Get on with the reef cap. Uh, you're just too sensible. Go! Next up, the cute clownfish with their super smell. Able to smell their anemone friends from kilometres away. For top taste buds, you can't beat the goatfish with his tasting whiskers. But no one wants to taste our toxic boxfish. It's OK for him to stand out with his boxy body because he has yucky tasting skin. What a collection. Although I sense our next sensors are going to be even more mind-boggling. <laughs> Meet the cute little cleaner ass. As their name suggests, they spend their time cleaning up, nibbling nasties off the skin of fishes to stop them getting poorly. Hey, I like his little dance that he's doing. You know, and I'm glad he's enjoying himself, but why? This is his way of saying, I'm free. Hello, fishes. Anyone want to clean up? Oh, he's a cleaner? Yep. Where's his feather duster? <laughs> they don't need it. All they need is their mouths and a big belly. The cleaner ass clean up the fish by eating all the nasty bits off them. Hang on a minute. That fish is massive and possibly quite hungry. So why doesn't he gulp up the cleaner wrasse? That's what happens to most little fish in the reef. Well, the cleaner wrasse is super safe, even with fish that are partial to a wrasse or two for dinner. OK, confusion overload. Please explain. Well, the cleaner wrasse know how to soothe the hungry fish by touching them with their fins as they clean. Ah, oh, very brave but stupid. Actually, it's quite the opposite. The cleaner ras knows that if he starts massaging the bigger fish, this will convince Mr Hungry Fish that he's doing a great job cleaning and it's probably better not to eat him. Oh, OK, now I understand. It is a bit weird, though, isn't it? Well, they know their clients very well. Once the fish starts to enjoy the massage, he will stay around longer, giving the cleaner ras more parasites to nibble. Oh, yes, more. The cleaner ras also seems to know when his clients are hungry and then he stays well away from their toothy chops. Get lost. And some fish visit the ras up to 150 times a day. Wow, that is a lot of massaging. Considering his size, he's definitely a brave fish. <laughs> Excuse me. But doesn't look like he works as hard as old man goatfish, who constantly rummages through the sand. So, just like our gregarious goatfish who feels his way to food with his whiskery feelers, our cheeky cleaner ras knows that tickling their fishy clients will ensure they get a fantastic feed. <laughs> Why are shrimps always cleaning up? Come on, mate, get alive, seriously. Hey, don't have a go at the shrimp or you may have to deal with the scary goby. If you're not from the barrow, you're not coming in. These gobies are the shrimp bodyguards. They live together with the shrimp. And while the shrimp tidies and builds the burrow, the gobies keep watch. <laughs> Sid, keep an eye on that dodgy looking geezer over there, will ya? <laughs> they take their work very seriously, don't they? Oh, yeah. These gobies are not to be messed with. They're very protective over there, mate, Shrimpy here. Shrimp meat, stay indoors. It's not safe. Oh, but I'll just get rid of this rubble. The shrimp has particularly poor eyesight, so relies on the goby to let him know when there might be danger lurking. Hang on a minute. I thought this show was about amazing senses. Even I can see underwater. Well, 
A little bit. <laughs> the goby can't talk. Duh! And the shrimp can't see. So how does he know when to scarf it into the burrow? They're in constant contact with their shrimpy buddies. The shrimp keeps its antennae touching the body of the goby, who flicks the shrimp with its tail when it's alarmed. Hey! Then they both scarf it into the burrow and they're safe as houses. They're an unlikely pairing, aren't they? Well, like all good friendships, I guess opposites attract. Plus, they both get lots of benefits from being buddies. The shrimp gets a warning of approaching danger, and the goby gets a nice and very clean home to lay its eggs in. So the shrimp and goby look out for each other by keeping in touch. Ah, how touching. Yes, and of course, like our cleaner ass and his fishy clients, the shrimp and goby choose to stay in touch by touch. So who's our next sensation? <laughs> Who are these dudes? You got that right, Gem. They are dudes. Let me introduce the Barracuda, hanging out together in their Barracuda fish school. Yo, man, what's up? Ah, so they're cool, but not too cool for school. Not for fish school, no. They like to hang out in their school gangs, and not much phases these fellas with their sleek, shiny body and large fangs. They think they're the ocean dudes. Maybe it's not so wise to tell them they're not the best lookers in the ocean. Eh, yeah, whatever. So why do they have such a high opinion of themselves? Well, they know that together they're quite fearsome, but they have a super sense that allows them to stick together in their schools like this. Over to you, Dr Barnacles. They have what's known as a lateral line down the side of their bodies, running from their head to their tail. The line consists of tiny hairs, which sends information to the brain about changes in water pressure. This hair-brain communication also allows them to feel objects around them, which explains why a big gang like that can travel without bumping into rocks or each other. Ah, thanks, Dr Barnacles. Oh, you are a clever chap. That's all right, Jack. I mean, uh, that's all right. Thank you, Gemma. Yes, yes, lovely. Um, over to you, Barney. Thanks, Dr Barnacles. On top of that, they have pretty good eyesight and can sprint, swim up to 38 miles an hour. Now that is sensational. Like the shrimp who uses a long antennae to keep in touch with his mate, the goby, Barracuda also keep in touch remotely. <laughs> Hello, Flipper. What's up, Barney? Dolphins are cool for many reasons. They swim brilliantly, they're great divers, but they also have amazing hearing, ten times better than us. What? I said ten times better than us. Wow. Very funny. So why do they need to hear so well? Well, it's hard to see long distances underwater, so they need a special way to find food, navigate, and know where all their Flipper mates are. Don't tell me. I've worked it out. What they do is they wave the flippers at each other. So one wave means, hey, let's jump out of the water. Two waves. That's like a dolphin high five. Give me some fear. Three waves is, would you like a cup of tea? Four waves. One, two, three, four. That's like I really do with a biscuit. Just something to keep the energy up while we're going long distances. Don't like, listen to him. Dolphins are a lot more clever than that. They use something called echolocation. Pardon? I said echolocation. I said echolocation. As I was saying, echolocation is a device that lots of marine mammals use to find their way around. They send out sound waves or sonar clicks that are bounced back when the wave hits an object. Huh? When the sound bounces, it comes back to the dolphins with all the info they need to know about their surroundings. Not only do they know what's lurking in the murky water, but they can even sense its shape, size and speed. So a dolphin could detect a golf ball bouncing from a whole football field away. Cool. So that'd be like us knowing there's a party going on the other side of the island without hearing or seeing anything. Huh? A party on this island? As if. One thing I've always wondered, though, how do they actually talk? Well, it's thought they probably talk by pushing air at a high pressure through their nostrils. Cheerio! So, like our bolshy barracuda, the delectable dolphins can sense each other from a distance. The barracudas through their lateral line on their sides, and the dolphins through their clicking echolocation. Oh, Jeb, Jeb, you've got to be sensible. It's time for a reef cap. The cleaner wrasse are crafty cleaners. 
they know that tickling their touchy clients means they get to feed and stay alive. And talk about touching, oh, there's nothing quite like this ocean friendship. While the shrimp cleans, the goby keeps watch for unwelcome guests and tells the shrimp when to get back into their burrow. But our balmy barracuda have super skin sensors to help each other stick together in their fish schools, meaning they are one of the coolest characters in the reef. And eh, whatever. Cool, maybe, but not as cool as the delectable dolphins. <laughs> with their super echolocating skills. <laughs> Who's our next sensation? <laughs> uh, I just need to get up there. Go on, Shrimpy, you can do it. There you go, easy. These shrimps can do anything. Yeah, or nothing. He's asleep. Uh, Barney, I think he's hurt his claw. Ah, well spotted, Jem. Shrimpy does have a giant claw, but that's his party trick. Huh? What? It's supposed to be that size. Oh, yes. Meet the snapping shrimp. He's so cute. Also known as the pistol shrimp. Ah, pleased to meet you, shrimpy. I'm scared. Uh, so what's with the giant claw? It's a prey stunner. I was merely demonstrating how the pistol shrimp uses its claw. And now for the size bit. To stand their prey, the shrimp snaps his claw shut, forcing out water at 100 kilometers per hour. This forms a bubble, which then collapses very quickly and causes a super loud popping sound, like a huge underwater shockwave. What's for dinner? I'm scared. So he has this giant claw, which he uses to send his prey into shock, so then he can gobble them up easily. Ow! Wow, how quick was that? I'm sure the hermit crab jumped as much as I did within his little shell. <laughs> ah, you're a wee man. Not only that, the sound he makes are louder than a real pistol, and the bubble reaches the temperature of the sun's surface. So he's born with a massive right hook, but instead of knocking his prey over the head with it, he uses it to snap out water. Why? Well, his sensational shockwaves work from a distance, which means he doesn't even have to get close to his prey to kill it. Pretty crafty. Ah, oh, and he looks so sweet and innocent. Like the adorable dolphins, the snaptastic snapping shrimps get what they need using sound. The dolphins get an idea of their surroundings, and the shrimps knock over their dinner. Well, this geezer looks a bit sore. He's sore, all right. This is the sawfish. Hello, dear. With a super snout that's like a vacuum cleaner, metal detector and spiky baseball bat all rolled into one. So, with a snout like that, he has to be a great sniffer, yeah? Oh, he does a lot more than smell. He has electrosensory pores on the underside of his sore snout. These are able to pick up electrical fields from prey hidden in the sand. Oh, how cool. He's like a Jedi. He's got a snout like a lightsaber. <laughs> his snout is by far his best accessory. He uses it to smell, taste, hear and touch his prey, who have no idea he's electrosent them until it's too late. Hey! And my grandma, what a big mouth he has. That's where the vacuum cleaner bit comes in. He can slash, shake or simply suck his victims up with his suction snout. Yeah, but it's all very well slashing, shaking and electro-sensing. But after all that, he can't even fit his victim in his mouth. What a wally. Like the snapping shrimp, the sawfish uses his awesome senses to catch his dinner. <laughs> Look, dancing grass. And sway to the left and body pop and dance. Yeah, they like a bit of synchronised dancing or even a bit of body popping. But it's not grass. This is the garden eel gang. Ah, but they look nothing like their relative, the moray eel. Yeah. Thank goodness. Oh, where's he gone? Ah, there he is. Hello. Well, the garden eels are a little shyer than Mr Moray eel here. In fact, they don't have much in common at all. The moray eels have a super sense of smell. The garden eels have big eyes huh? and amazing eyesight, which means they can see their food and predators a lot better. But why do they all scoot down at once? There's not that many predators, surely. 
Yeah, they're a bit wimpy, it has to be said. If they sense danger, the whole lot of them go down. So they have a tendency to copy each other. Quick, something's coming. Quick, get down. Eric, hurry up. Come on, Eric, you're always last. Do they ever split up from each other or leave their holes for greener pastures? No, there's no place like a sandy burrow for these scaredy cats. They're even covered in slime to help them slide in and out of their holes. So the garden eels have magnificent eyesight, but what's the connection? Well, like our super snouted sawfish, our floaty garden eels use their super sense to find food. Hey, look, Gem, I'm a swordfish. It was a sawfish, Barney. Oh, I should have saw that coming. <laughs> I did a joke. It wasn't funny. OK, time for a reef cap. First up was our cunning cone shell. With his siphon snout, no chilling fish is safe. I mean, who would suspect a seashell could be a deadly poisonous predator? Well, who would suspect a crayfish of smelling through their legs and communicating through we? I am very glad I can talk. But for supersonic smell, look no further than the teeny baby clownfish, who follow their nose to their mate, the anemone. Yay! What about these feisty fish with whiskers on their chinny-chin-chins, just like their namesake? <laughs> but these greedy goat fish use their whiskers to find food. And have an amazing sense of taste, unlike the ungainly boxfish, who looks good but tastes amazingly bad. Sensational. Our sensible cleaner rats know that the best way to feast on their fishy clients is to tickle and touch them, making sure they stay around, allowing the rats a super feed. For a real touchy twosome, you can't beat the shrimp and his goby bodyguards, who alert the shrimp when it's time to scarper into their burrow. Our barracuda dudes rule the ocean in their super sensory schools, keeping in touch by side senses. Another high five for our dancing dolphins, whose sonar senses mean they can communicate from miles away. Talking about sound, what about your snapping shrimp? A mega claw that he uses to make a super loud pop. But I guess nothing beats your very own electrical super snout. Hello, dear which the sawfish uses to see, hear, taste and smell his prey. Hey! Well, good eyesight is pretty cool if it lets you do synchronised swimming with your mates, like our scaredy-cat garden eels. Quick, something's coming. Quick, get down. <sighs> do you know what, Gem? I think I might be developing some super senses of my own. I'm getting a real waft of chocolate cake. I mean, that smell must be coming from the mainland. And I can smell it. That's amazing. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Ah.